All right, boys. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. We're not going to show the, uh, the camera yet. I am uh, I'm getting ready. Give me like five minutes. All right, boys. All right. Forgive the hair for just like two seconds. Um, you guys are probably going to think, what the fuck's up with the rat's nest? I just took a shower, so I, I better not see. If I see any comments on the rat's nest, we're going to fix it. Don't worry. We're going to get it fixed. We're going to get the chat fixed. I'm like rushing back from work, so you guys are going to have to, you guys are going to have to fucking, Jesus, what did you break? Hoot. We're gonna fix it. Don't worry. We got we got we got the fix right here, ladies and gentlemen. Canadian brother, what's up, my man? How are we doing today, bro? Holy heard a loud bang. What did I did I do something bad? I don't know, but we're ready. Or almost ready at least. Like, I literally got off work, like, 20 minutes ago, and you couldn't pay me to stream looking like, uh, dealing with all the fucking dust in my hair and on my clothes and on my skin. That's just not fucking happening, so. We're gonna get a little, little styling going. You guys have been asking how I do my hair. There's nothing, there's not much really to it, to be honest. Um, and to be honest, there's probably a better way of doing this, but you know what? We're just going to, that's just how we're going to do it. Um, oh, Jesus, that looks fucking terrible right now. Um, maybe I should have fucking, well, now I need to wash, I don't know what I'm doing. I got to wash my hands now, too. Like. I don't even have like I don't even have the sleeves rolled up. Like this is just a nightmare. Um so y'all gotta like bear with me for like two seconds. And the craziest thing is too, is like I'm on a time crunch today. Uh yeah, I gotta be somewhere in like a couple hours. So we're gonna try to fit this in. We get a lot of fucking music this week too, like an absurd amount of music, which was insane because there was a ton of music last week. And then we got, Jesus, my hair looks fucking terrible. Just like 
watch your guys' eyes for like two seconds. <laughs> K-E. I don't know what that means, my man. I'm sorry. Did he get Kepik? Yes, don't worry. We will listen to Kepik for sure. You're looking great, King. Well, thank you, George. I appreciate that. Um, the hair is not to my standard, though. I'm not going to be rocking this rat's nest, unfortunately. So... Ace Aura for sure. Yeah, don't worry. Ace Aura is definitely happening. We're gonna get, we're gonna get Ace Aura. We're gonna get the three big EPs this week, and then we're gonna get uh, some other jazz. So we're gonna let this dry. Um, it's probably not gonna be to my liking, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta deal with it. Sometimes you gotta deal with the consequences of your action, bro. I gotta help you with the hair sometime fucking down dude my hair is fucking i can get it nice but the the way i gotta like start with it it's brutal like this is not good at all but i mean it'll it'll eventually reach the state that i want it to but it just it's just gotta be in this like state where i just let it air dry but i'm about to make a fat google doc dude if you do it i'll read the whole thing bro straight up i'll read the whole fucking thing i will read the whole thing I need help with this shit. So, <laughs> all right. Music. As we've mentioned before, a little bit of a speed run today. Um, we're going to be uh, pounding out the tunes left, right, and center. So, you want to get your, you got to buckle up, get ready, because shit's about to be fucking quick. I don't even have my phone, dude. This is a nightmarish start. Ah, there it is. It was on my desk the whole time. My stupid ass just didn't even fucking see it. Can you please react to Dreamworld by Terrace? Um, we'll see what the track lists look like. As mentioned before, we're doing a little speed run today. So, we'll have to do what we can to uh, fit as many tracks in as possible. So, um, we'll do our best. But in the meantime... Let's get, uh, let's get some tracks going here. So we have got the Cranked At EP. We've got the Kazlo EP. We got the Ironheart EP. Everyone just decided let's release EPs this week. So yeah, if we're going to release EPs this week, let's just fucking do it. Kepik Leo Colette fighting for. If found, Lux Tides, Hollow. Laugh my ass off too many EPs. Can you please react to Akali's new song called Fool? Okay, again, we will uh, we will see. I actually was considering, I did want to get, um, I did was considering getting the new Akali. So I just, we'll have to see how many uh, releases we got so far. Um, BTS, I don't really want to listen to the new BTSM to be honest. Ace Aura Nazar, Danny King, with All Be Waiting, absolute must. Can I actually tune in tonight's stream as I'm off work? Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go indeed. 
Gonna play Cyberpunk with this on. It's gonna be a good night. Well, damn straight, my man. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, and then I think... Go... Thankfully, the EPs are a little shorter this week, which is a, uh, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing and a good thing. Um... Another release is Jetto and Hylia press start. That definitely wouldn't be a bad one. I don't think I've heard Jetto, a Jetto song in like years. I think the last song I heard from him was the, uh, what is it? Uh, the AU5 collaboration, I think. Shh, what's up, Digital Skies? How's it going, my man? Jetto tune slaps. Do we got to listen to it? We'll have to figure it out. We'll have to figure out what singles we want to get out of the way. Um, Iron Heart. The Lost Crusade, I think it was called, if I'm not mistaken. Digital Skies is here. Holy big fan, my man. I'm a big fan as well. If it wasn't evident enough with the, uh, with the YouTube channel. All right, so we got Castrum Mortis with your boy, Celestial Void, absolute must. I think In Love was with Sad Boys, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll, we'll get the rep, we'll get the rep for them there. Uh, we have got Sanjar, and we've got the Mad Duke. Boom, that one's done. We got Crank That, Slaughterhouse EP. A lot of it's a lot of fucking music, boys. It's it's a lot of music. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get through it all this week. But like I said before, I've mentioned it like three times already. But we're gonna keep mentioning it if we have to. It's a speed run week this week. We're gonna pound through the music. Start shit. Lots of these have already come out, too. Vexed and back to you. Alright. I think those are the main ones I wanted to get out of the way this week. Um, I'll take two suggestions. I'll take maybe two suggestions. Because the track list is already pretty, pretty massive. So I'll take probably two suggestions. Seems like Jetto is getting a uh, Dream World. <laughs> Omar really wants Dream World. All right, because you're so persistent, I'll listen to it. I don't think I'm missing any. I'm gonna check. Uh, Jetto for sure. Okay, we'll get Jetto out of the way. Jetto Hylia. Press start. Uh, we'll check the Discord just to see if I missed some obvious ones. Um, yeah, outside of that, I'd say we, I say we get started here. I think the order is pretty much fine. The Cali new song is a must. All right, we'll put it on the list. If we, uh, if we get to it, we get to it. If we don't, we don't. That's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. I'm just going to make sure I didn't, uh, didn't miss any, but Discord's taking a, a light year to load. Let's get it going. I agree. I'm Larissa. All right. Uh, let's see. I don't think I'm missing any obvious ones. 
Oh, sharks. That's probably worth listening to. Okay, I think that's the list. Any objections? Uh, please feel free to leave in the chat. Also, I have to, I totally forgot to plug my stream on Twitter. We're going to go do that real quick. And then uh, we're going to get started. So, yeah, we're going to go little Twitter plug. Let the Twitter fans know. The list is getting a little too long. We're going to have to shorten that a bit. All right. All right, Twitter plug is live. We are live. Let's get it going. All right. Well, yo, TK, have you listened to the new EDM artist Neo Vi? That does not sound familiar to me. Uh, not sure if I have or not. Probably not. Um, I'm always listening to music off stream, so uh, feel free to shoot some suggestions. We'll uh. I'm always interested in checking out some new stuff. So, all right. I say we give a, let's start with my boy Kepik. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the channel before. Kepik's my boy. He's always sending me some unreleased stuff. Even though, even though we do the reactions, I'm always, always down to listen to some, some unreleased tunes from him. Um, he showed me this one. I don't remember what it sounds like. I only listened to it once at most. I just wanted to give him my uh, my thoughts on it. So first time I'm listening, got on a, uh, he got on Heaven Sent. So also album art's fucking dope. I don't know if you guys have seen the album art. Uh, absolutely ridiculous album art. So when the album art's good, it's generally a good sign. Need to give him a listen. He just released one last Friday and it's incredibly good. Okay, I'll listen to it off camera, my man. I will definitely listen to that. We'll uh we'll give the, the new artists some listens. But all right. As mentioned before, Kepik. Buddy sent me this one. Uh yeah. Don't remember what it sounds like, but I think if I remember correctly, it was pretty good. So let's listen. Atmospheric so far. Tell me what you driving for. I need to hear so I can understand. I looking for a change in the way people say your name. God, I love Lil Clat. Her vocals are nice, man. Nice so far. How's it going, Ryder fan, my man? It's an obviously good vote from Leo Colette. Nice atmosphere so far. Nice little percussion there. All right, what do we got? Yeah, it's coming back a little. Always love the Kepik fills in there. Super glitchy style sound. I 
know he's kind of going for like this sort of synth poppy, synth wavy style sound too. I've mentioned it before, but... Like the sort of glitchy sound. Little halftime. Yeah. It's a banger. It's Capic. He's always doing some cool shit. Not much for me to really say on that one as i've mentioned before um my boy capic's always ho hooking me up with some unreleased stuff so um have heard that one before didn't really remember it but kind of came back to me i almost feel like there was i'm pretty sure there was a different second drop on the one that i heard it before but um yeah so overall very good very good um obviously you know with leo collette you're going to get the vocals. You're going to get the sick vocals. It's Leo Collette. Um, love Kepik's sort of synth wavy style sound he's going for. Kind of um, separates him from the bunch. Um, gives him his own little unique sound aside from his like very, you know, glitchy sort of um, uh, unpredictable drops, if I was to say. And, you know, he's always doing some cool stuff with the hybrid style sound. So, yeah. Um, very few complaints with that one. Um, Sound design, I one big thing uh, that I've uh, always had a slight issue with in Kepik songs is uh, the sound design. Sound design was great there. Sounded super clean. Sounded super nice. As Sad Boys mentioned, welcome them in the uh, the chat. So super clean. Or no, that was Digital Skies. Sorry, but super, Sad Boys are in the chat too. So um, yeah, super clean one. Um, not much really else to say, obviously, with Kepik kind of. Was hoping for, you know, a uh, hybrid style drop. He's always willing to try out some some unique new stuff. Still one of my favorites from him, though. Um, I think that's a flat eight, if I'm going to be honest. Fun little tune. Um, yeah. Generally, eight and a half. We got some eight and a halfs. We got some 7.66s from Oscar. 8.75s. Yeah. I think it's pretty fair to say that's a good one from Kepik. Um, yeah, interested to see what he does too. As mentioned before, the dude's got a ton of songs just waiting to be released. So hope uh, hope he's found a new little home here on Heaven Sent and uh, he can start getting those out. So yeah, this album art is so dope too. I don't know if you guys have seen the album art, but top tier album art this year. Heaven Sent's always doing some cool album art. So all right. Capic tunes out of the way. Um, I say we listen to maybe one or two more singles, then we'll hop into an EP. So, what do you guys? What do you guys? What are some singles you guys want to hear? We'll go. Uh, we'll hit two. We'll get two out of the way, and then uh, we'll listen to one of the EPs. Either I, I think either Ironheart or Caslow will do first. So. 
yeah, open to take some suggestions for what you guys want to see. Of course, Omar is going to hype up Dream World. <laughs> He really wants me to listen to this song, man. The way Omar suggests in Dream World, you, I'm thinking it's got. Does it got? Is it got to be a ten? You know what, buddy? Just for you, we'll listen to it. Haven't heard the Ace Aura track. I do really want to listen to Ace Aura, so that's a good suggestion. We'll do those three. Then I think we'll take a. Uh, Little EP break. I think we'll do we'll do Ironheart first, I think. Or we'll do Kazlo first. We'll do Kazlo first. We'll get the Rocktronic out of the way. Alright. Seems like a good track list to me. Um yeah. So playlist ad for Kepic. Favorite one this week. Is that the Ace Aura one, I'm assuming? All right. Well, Omar has been hyping up this track nonstop since the stream started. So let's listen to it. It's only three minutes and six seconds. So the way Omar's been hyping this up, though, I feel like it's got to be a 10. Nice precaution. I have to turn that down a bit. Unique drum pattern. Yeah, I mean, it's not really my preferred sound in the world, but it's definitely not bad. Um, still haven't really been able to get in the whole wave sort of sound yet. I know it's becoming a big thing, so I think I might have to hop on board soon. Hey, yo, Caden, what's up, Vince, my man? How's it going? I'll give it that. I'll give it its props. Was that the drop or was that like a little, oh, okay, maybe a little build up? That's not bad. Nice little automation there. I wish I liked it a little bit more, but it's it's surprisingly not bad for Wave. I can kind of dig it. Yeah, it's not bad. I just wish I liked Wave a little more. I'm gonna be honest. It's gonna take some time. I think. I think. It seems like a lot of artists are doing it now. As uh, Digital Skies mentioned in the chat, he's doing one. So, um, yeah. Wave's coming. I think a lot of artists are... Uh, I've seen a lot more artists doing it. Um, it's a sound that's probably on its way up. So, I think we might have to get used to it. But, uh, yeah. Just not really on board with the sound right now. Um, 
I feel like a lot of the time the in uh the way in wave like the melodies don't really attach to me that much feel that uh could benefit from a little bit more you know uh what's the word I'm looking for melodicity I guess um I don't know critique crit my critiquing skills for wave aren't exactly the uh in peak performance terrace is an up-and-comer well yeah i mean honestly production wise it holds up i think for me it's more of just the fact i'm just not really in love with the sound yet so but heading in with it in, into it with an open mind but it was produced pretty well didn't have too many issues with how it was produced and whatnot so 7.5 digital skies gives it a 9 7.5 778.15 i think I'll be kind of in the same ballpark as you. Just a little bit lower. I think I'd give it like 6.25. It's still not bad. It's still not bad, to be honest. I just like, it's one of those ones where I, I, I don't hear it. Where I like, I'll hear it and I don't think it's like disappointing or anything like that. It's just like, I can listen to it and be like, okay, it's not my sound. Um... Yeah, so Omar, you didn't disappoint. It was just uh, something a little different. But you know what? Sometimes we got to feature some new subgenres on the channel. We can't just listen to the same melodic dubstep over and over again. We got to spice it up sometimes. We've got like company in here, so we're gonna get some headbangers. We've got Ace Aura. Speaking of Ace Aura, as mentioned before. I've mentioned it like eight times on the stream, but I'm going to mention it again for the new viewers. We're doing a little speed run today. Um, got some places to be later on in the day. So we're going to pound through the releases. I know some people say I talk too much. Um, so if you think I talk too much, this is the stream for you. Because we're just going to be going song through song through song through song. We're not going to be doing two hours of nonsense. Although, who knows? Knowing the stream, it might happen. Um, but yeah, we have got Ace Aura, Nazar, Danny King. Um, people will say otherwise. That, you know, obviously there's people in the dubstep community, in the dubstep critic community and whatnot, that um, have their dissenting opinions about certain artists. People think, I've seen some people say they think Nazar is a little too basic. I personally love Nazar. I think uh, War Cry was one of my favorite songs last year. Barely missed the top 50. When it comes to my dubstep, as long as the sound design's good, you're generally, I'm generally on board with it. And uh, so, seeing Nazar. Also, Nazar's sustain bases, dude. I can get on board with that shit any day. But we have, he's collaborating here. With a little artist named Ace Aura. Um, not sure if you guys have heard Ace Aura. Probably. If you guys want an idea. Of whether I like this man or not. We own this. So. <laughs> Just giving you a little idea. Of what I think about Ace Aura. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Danny King. We've got a little vocal on here. So, yeah. Safe to say I'm pretty excited for this one. This was one of the most anticipated releases for me this week. When I saw this one came out. So, it took a while for me to, you know, really... Well, I don't know what I'm saying. I was really anticipating listening to this. So, what do you say we just listen to it? Stop with the BS. Stop with the nonsense. The chit-chat. Let's see what we got. I'm probably gonna have to turn it down because it's Nazar. And he can be extremely loud sometimes. Same here, it's so damn good, dude. Well, I am pumped to listen to it then. I'm tired of hollow heights. I'm tired of fixing scars that don't belong to me. Very nice atmosphere so far. Kind of a given with Ace Aura. Okay. Sort of like a, what is that, like a garage drum pattern? Are we already getting a drum? 
okay. Okay. Fantastic snare. It's a little basic for Ace Aura, I'm not gonna lie, but sound design's there. There you go, brings it up a little bit. It's like, oddly more melodic for Ace Aura. Oh, that leads. Oh, that's so good. Ace Aura is always kind of bringing the xylophone sort of sound. Absolutely on board with it. Yeah. Um, didn't really hear much Nazar in that. Thought I would have heard a little bit more Nazar. Um, okay, I guess we're getting another one. Okay, so what? Is this third drop? Yo, I'm s yo, I'm gonna be honest. I am so on board with the techno switch-ups in fucking electronic music right now. It's one it's like Psytrance where I wouldn't really listen to it in my own time in like a full song, but in a switch-up, dude. Ooh, that transition though, okay. No, we're gonna get the next drop, but The sound design. The xylophone. The snare. Yeah. Kind of hard to uh, take the bass face off for that one. The face muscles always, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before too. Post stream, my face starts to get really sore. Because <laughs> you just hear all these gross fucking tunes. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, as mentioned before. Okay, first off, let's start with that techno switch up. Didn't, I didn't say much during it because I was going on my little tangent about how I love the techno switch-ups. It was nice, man. Would have liked a little bit more of the melodic sound intertwined with the techno, perhaps. But overall, techno, techno switch-ups deliver right now. It's the, it's the hot new thing. Keep doing it. Um, I'm down with it. So, But yeah. So, techno switch-up was great. Sound design, absolutely on point. Snare was on point. Danny King vocals were on point, too. Um, my only problem... It's Ace Aura, man. I would have liked a little bit more risk, dude. I know I say it all the time. You guys are probably sick of me saying it. <sighs> the idea was a little basic. I'm not gonna lie. It was a little basic. But the sound design was absolutely there. Um... Would have liked a little bit more chaos. That's that's my big thing with Ace Aura. I love the chaos he brings in his music. So, kind of wish it was a little bit more present. I'm not going to lie. But, it's still delivered massively. Can't lie. Playlist ad for sure. Also, kind of wish there was a little bit more Nazar. Didn't really sound like there was much there. I know Nazar doesn't really have... I know like the sustained bass is kind of like his signature sound, which there wasn't really even much of. 
But yeah, kind of wish there was more Mazar. Sounded very Ace Aura, although Ace Aura is one of the most recognizable sounds in electronic music right now. So kind of a given that you're going to recognize Ace Aura. But yeah, that was pretty good. Um, as mentioned before, a little bit more risk. I need a little bit more risk. That could have been like a nine. Um, I'm going to give it an 8.25 as a starter. Starter rank. Songs have been pretty good this week so far already. Um, last week, I don't think, I think we only had one song above an eight. So we're already, we're already there. We've already passed, surpassed our goals for the eight quota. Um, yeah, that's my main thoughts on it. Um, super excited to see what Ace Aura, my man, does in the future. He's always doing some fun shit. So, um, but yeah, good to see the sound design was at least on point. I mean, that's also a given with every Ace Aura tune you listen to, but it was definitely there. And the fucking snare. Yeah, one of the better snares I've heard in a while. So, all right, that's Ace Aura. Um, what do you guys say? Let's get Kazlo out of the way, eh? So, I have mentioned before, maybe I haven't mentioned on directly on the channel before, but Brody from Kazlo is my boy. Um, he lives out in Vancouver. I'm not too far away. We've been trying to link up at a show forever. But last time I went to Vancouver, or the, I think the past two times I've went out to Vancouver, he had a show. He got booked for a show. So obviously the shows take priority over going to see like Kazo or Jason Ross. So, but yeah, my boy Brody sent me this track, the, sent me the EP a little early. I was like, appreciate the offer, but we got to listen to it on the stream for everyone else to listen to too. I know some of you guys will tune in and uh, listen to the stuff for the first time on stream, which is a huge honor. So, but yeah, we've got a little Rocktronic vibe. Um, I've kind of mentioned it on the channel before. The Rocktronic pop punk thing isn't my biggest vibe. Um, heard it. I've heard it been, I've heard it done. Like the Rocktronic sound I've, it has been done really well before. Vince recommended me Searching for Nothing by Fells. Probably one of my most played songs this year. That song is fucking incredible. Um, but yeah, we have got a little sort of pop punk EP. Not a phase. Like they're all on board with the emo sort of emo sort of punk sort of vibe. So um, let's listen to it. We've got some familiar names. We've got Say We Can Fly was on the 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 William Black said the sky collaboration micah martin classic rocktronic vocalist and then we got sad boys collaborating with caslo like we got some familiar names so i say we listen to parachute here and uh yeah i i will say i have i'm pretty sure i've listened to parachute before but um i think i just completely forgot about it i don't know if it was like I think when I was listening to it, something came up and I couldn't finish the song and then I just didn't go back to it or something like that. I just forgot about it. So this is technically going to be as close to a first listen as it will get. Um, there's probably not much I'm going to remember from it. So let's get into it. Heading in with an open mind, as mentioned before. Yo, I'm back. I had to eat dinner. Welcome back, my man. I mean, the thing with Kazlo is you're going to get really clean production. Mix down's really nice. Mm. 
All right, are we getting a drop here? It's nice, dude. I wish the percussion was a little punched through the mix a little bit more. But it's a vibe, dude. I'll be honest. It's a vibe. Very guitar forward. But that's the thing, is just like, not in love with the vocals here. I can dig a rocktronic vocal, but just not entirely in love with the vocals on this one, but production definitely delivers. Summer vibe, no doubt, definitely. It's a windows down sort of vibe. All right, drop two. Ooh. Little bit crusher, okay. Little bit more drums. I think I preferred the first drop a little bit more. Definitely like that halftime sound, but on board with a kind of switch up there. All right. That is track one. That is Parachute. That was a single that already came out. Um... Yeah, I don't remember. I don't really remember listening to that. So, um, yeah, it's pretty good, dude. I'm going to be honest. Um, as like as mentioned before, it's just not the Rocktronic thing is not really my vibe right now. Um, but I think the production was really on point. That's what you're going to get with Kazlo. They're mixing gods. Their mixes are always insane. I mean, if you want a good mix down, go listen to their Griffin remix they did. Bonkers, bonkers clean, but Yeah, I like the first drop a little bit more kind of leaves a little bit more space to let the guitar breathe in the first drop I feel like the drums kind of clutter the second drop just a tad um, Still on board with it though as mentioned not in love with the vocals either, but um, that can take some time to grow on to um, but yeah, surprisingly pretty good, man. I, I mentioned like the first drop, super clean guitar forward sound, love the electric guitar forward sound. Um, and it brings the impact too. That's the big thing. Um, was, was thinking that maybe the, the drops might have not necessarily delivered, but that one definitely did. So, um, promising start. I think I'll give that like... Maybe a 6.75. We got some 6.3s. We got some 6s. We got some 6.5s. Yeah, definitely was pretty good. Um, some things I wasn't in love with, though, but, you know, that's just a personal preference thing. I'm sure, I'm sure that the pop punk fans are absolutely loving this one, so. All right. We have got your boyfriend's car. Say we can fly. Um, another little short one, two minutes and 44 seconds. The EP is only eight minutes and 42 seconds. Realistically, it's long enough to be a double single. So let's listen to it. This one's a little bit louder. Right away, I can notice. Definitely digging these vocals more. Yeah, nice guitar in the back. That's engaging. Yeah, 
Yeah. Nice percussion too. No drop? Alright. Maybe some Kazlo waiting vibes, you get the drop at the end. That guitar in the back, dude. Get a drop in this one? Oh! Yeah, there you go. Bring the, the drums in a little bit. Nice transition. Yeah. Definitely more engaging. Um little short tune. Nice keys there too. Yeah. Okay. I'm on board with that one too. Um Definitely think that one definitely think that one's a little bit better than parachute. Loved the verses. Felt that when the electric guitar kind of came in the back. Very that was a very nice touch. Percussion was pretty nice as well. Uh Say We Can Fly's vocals definitely felt a little bit more engaging there. Um but yeah. I think if if I had to make one point, um kind of wish that we did get a, a sec we get did get two drops. We did get the one drop, which was very nice. Um, just felt a little, just, just kind of wish that we did get that second drop. The, the, the verses when the, when there was no drop in that first one, it kind of felt like the vibe extended a little too long without really giving us anything sort of, um, different or interesting throughout verses one and verse two. So they were kind of the same in that aspect. Um, but then the drop definitely delivered. So huge bonus. Yeah. Just, just kind of wish that we got two drops there. Um, especially in, I mean, in a two, four minute, 44 song, second song, you can make it work. Um, just based off my preferences though, kind of was hoping we would have got another one there, but, um, we might pull out the rare 7.15. Normally we'll give like a 7.25. I think that's just like, I don't know if it's exactly a 7.25, maybe seven's a better rating. But it doesn't feel exactly like a 7. It feels slightly better than a 7. I think a borderline playlist ad. For me, at least. So, yeah. Pretty good stuff. Um, definitely delivering on expectations. Or I guess even exceeding expectations. Um, yeah, as mentioned before, not really crazy about the Rocktronic sound. But we got some 7.3s. 7 7.5, 7. So, yeah. All right. Let us go to our next little track here. We have got In Love by Kazlo as well. We'll finish off the EP strong. Little Sad Boys tune. Micah Martin. Unique. I like that. 
the sort of start stop sound. Ooh, nice build. All right. Yeah, super clean. I think if I do want to make one point, I think, I think this is the big thing that I'm not really in love with the Rocktronic with. All the drops sound very homogenous to me. Like it's a very nice sound, but just very, It's. I feel like it's very hard to kind of switch up how it can sound, but still nice. Really like this more sort of somber feel. That dude. The cleanness in that buildup. Nice little fake out. Okay. Yeah, back to that halftime feel. That's pretty good, man. All right. Yeah, I mean... That's the thing, it's kind of hard to kind of review all these songs because, as mentioned before, I feel like the Rocktronic sound can kind of get a little he like homogenous between tracks. Um, they feel pretty similar. It's kind of hard to switch it up because it's a very, very niche sound. Um, it's kind of like melodic dubstep, what melodic dubstep's kind of going through right now. Pretty hard to switch up that sound. Um, but yeah. Overall, pretty nice. Michael Martin vocals were nice. I didn't love the... I don't really love it when... And, and this this happens in Hollow, too, where, like, the energy just, like, goes up to fucking 10 during, like, the, the verses. It did it in the first verse. The second verse slowed it down, and it was so goddamn pretty. So, gotta give it its props for that. Um, But, yeah. Overall, just very clean. Pretty nice sound overall. Um, and yeah, kind of like pop songs, 6.88, Micah, yeah, Micah Martin really suits the, uh, the Rocktronic sort of vibe for sure. I think, um, you should definitely fit on more of them. And the thing with Micah Martin too, is that lots of the times he can make a song that's not really even trying to go for that Rocktronic sound, make it sound like it. Like, I think he's been on some pretty, uh. Like, what was the one that he did with Fairlane? He did one with Fairlane, like, years ago. That was supposed to be... It was supposed... To, it was going for this, like, super cheery sort of vibe. And Micah Martin was singing on it and just made it sound like rock. So, <laughs> um... What do we want to give that? Oh, excuse me. Didn't get much sleep last night, so I'm kind of running on... Running on empty, but... Yeah, I think that's about... I think that was slightly better than... Your boyfriend's car. I think like maybe a 7.25 would be fair. I think that's the big thing. I think when in that lower range 7, it's. It, I think everything's generally done pretty well. Um, just nothing inherently too fantastic. But overall, I, I honestly, if I had to give like my final reviews on the EP, because I mean, short, it's a short EP, so we're already done. Um... Definitely exceeded my expectations, though. I think a lot of the times I hear these, like, Rocktronic tunes and the drops kind of fall flat a little bit. Um, mixing was really great. Um, the drops delivered. 
Oh, excuse, excuse me. I mean, anyways, I'm gonna go drink some water, but um, yeah. Not much else to say on that front. Mixing was really well, drops delivered. Kind of just felt the ideas were very similar. Um, but yeah, so definitely a, an enjoyable listen. Two out of three playlist ads is pretty good. I added your boyfriend's car and in love to the playlist. Um, but yeah, so not too, not too shabby. Bro, that's my thoughts too. The Crystal Skies Fairlane collab you talking about? It was, I'm trying to, yeah, I think Full of Life is the one I'm trying to talk about. Because um, the Fairlane collab with Crystal Skies was like straight Rocktronic. Um, I actually don't, I don't even remember what, the, I don't even think I ended up adding this one to the playlist. A little loud. Like, it's not even really going for the rock sound in this. Ah, you know what? It kind of is. It was kind of before Rocktronic was even a thing when that song came out. So, all right, I'm going to go get some water. We'll be right back, and then we'll listen to some more singles. You drove away my madness, TKP. We didn't. We didn't go piss. We just went to go get some water. The chug jug is. Uh, I'm too lazy to fill it up because it's gonna take a while. So we're just gonna. If we need some water, we're just gonna head in there real quick. Um. But yeah. Not too shabby on the EP. Um. All right. What singles we thinking? I want to get If Found out of the way. If Found has been growing on me quite heavily. I say we'll listen to two or three of these. And then we'll do the Ironheart EP. And then we'll finish off, do a couple more singles. Listen to Crank That. And I think that'll be a, uh, that'll be a day. So, yeah. What are you guys, what are you guys thinking? What's, what singles you gonna want you you guys want to listen to next? I'm thinking if found. I'll let you guys. I think someone was hyping up the Jetto song earlier. Who was it? Uh. All right. For some reason, I can't find it. Let's do Fool. Sure. We'll listen to Akali too. Akali, if found. Hit the if found for sure. Hyping up the Jetto tune. Okay, we'll do. And then you know what? That actually ends up working out. We'll do Iron Heart. And then we'll hit. The dubstep songs, although Sharks is like barely dubstep. He's more of like the color base sound. But we'll hit the dubstep. Kai Wachi and uh, company with Sharks. And then we hit Crank That. I think we'll just end up listening to the new ones. I've listened to... Uh, I've pretty much listened to Ding Dong. I've listened to Move Back. I've listened to all of like the older ones. So I think we'll just listen to the new ones. Um, It's not like... I, I can only imagine it's not going to be some EP that tells a story or anything. It's probably just some, like, absurd sound design. The If Found one is absolutely not so but so. All right. Well, let's listen to it. I've mentioned, I've uh, mentioned before on the channel, um, haven't really been in love with If Found Sound. Um, been one of those artists I've always wanted to enjoy, but just never have. Um, been listening to If Found a lot more. Um, 
just this week, I feel like the the remix that he did for Arm and Hammer is probably one of my most played songs. That just this week, for some reason, it's been really getting repeated. So, hoping that I can have a really positive reaction to one of his tracks because as yeah it's just his sound hasn't really connected with me um over the past year or so and uh yeah getting late is so fucking good i know people will give their slander hate and whatnot um and i know people will probably say argue how much slander even contributed to that one but um yeah the getting late's fantastic the the Arm and Hammer, Saving Lives If Found remix, fantastic. So I'm sure the song is not. I knew you. <laughs> you can expect you can expect Draco to say that. <laughs> but yeah, um, what do you say we just get into it? If Found Lux Tides second track of the year by a melodic artist named Hollow. Uh, someone has mentioned in my Discord that a lot of tracks are named Hollow this year. So, yeah, let's listen to it. Hollow, Lux Tides, if found. Interesting. Super unique so far. Alright, I'm on board with it so far. Super unique. Love the bases in that. Nice vocals too. I mean, is that Lux Tides? Is this gonna be a like DMB? <laughs> oh, that's cool, dude. That's fucking sick. That's sick. The sound design was on point. Production was on point. The idea that the whole track has been so unique so far. This feels a little bit more familiar, but still very unique. Oh, and the chords in the back too? Alright, what are we getting dropped to? Yeah, that's a banger, dude. I'm so happy that I heard an If Found track on stream, and I really enjoyed it. I've wanted to give If Found his props for a while. Yeah, that's a banger, dude. Super unique. Um, little D&B number from If, if Found. Um... Vocals were fantastic. Lux Tide vocals definitely delivered. Um, and uh, yeah, even like in the verses, man, the verses were super clean, fantastic percussion. Mixed down was awesome. And uh, then just in those drops, man, super creative sound, super chaotic. Um, 
you know, you got your mix of like vocal, vocally driven leads, like leads that are made out of the vocals um, and sort of like the if found style sound design uh, blended throughout. That's a playlist ad for sure. Uh, that might be the best song of the week so far. That might be song of the week so far. Um, yeah, that was a banger, dude. I don't know how, I don't know which other way to put it. Like, and, and like, I've, as I mentioned before, I'm super happy to get a song that I liked from if found on stream. He's, his sound has really been growing on me lately. And, uh, yeah, super pumped to have a song I like from him on stream. So I'm going to give that one. I think let's give that an 8.5. On first listen, obviously it's still not like gonna be like a nine, because that's just like we're talking like last heroes level dubstep to get a nine sort of thing, melodic dubstep sort of. It's very hard for a non melodic dubstep song to get a nine, but it's got its melodic elements. Super creative, um, mixing's fantastic, and uh, yeah, I think that's one that could potentially be higher than an eight point five in maybe about. Give me, give me like two weeks. Come back to me in two weeks. That number will probably be a little bit higher than an 8.5. But just based off first listen, very, very promising. I um, think that one will be a grower. Uh, we got 7 8.75, 7.1 props to the vocals. Vocals are fantastic. Definitely agree. Not much of my sound, but it's not bad at all. 8.75, 7, 9, 7. Seems we got some conflicting opinions. Some people think it's really good. Some people think it's uh, just good. I'm kind of in the middle of you guys. Um, that was so good, dude. Def looking to see how much it grows. I think that's going to be a grower for sure. I think it's it's those unique tracks um, that you hear right away. And you, you're, you're in love with the idea. And you're in love with the production and all that stuff. But... The big thing is it's just, you. it's unique as fuck. I just got to get used to it. That could genuinely be one of the better songs this year. Hands down. Um, just need some time with it. Has Nurko's song grown on you? Still hasn't, man. I'm sorry. Um, I've wanted to like it. It just hasn't grown on me, dude. Um, maybe in, check with me in another two weeks, maybe, but... The thing with I I generally know myself the what the ones the songs that are generally growers are the ones that I just need to get it, where they're pretty unique and I just need to get used to the ideas. Um, one more day was a perfect example by Jason Ross and Blank. wasn't in love with the drop idea initially, but the production was so well done. I got used to the idea. Fucking slapper of a tune now. So. Yeah, I don't know if the Nurko one's necessarily going to grow on me because I just, there's not a ton I really love in, in that sound. It's just more of just production's really nice in that one, but ideas-wise kind of just falls a little flat for me. So we'll give it its chance, though. Um, how's time looking? We're, 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 we're cruising. We're cruising. I'm hoping we could be okay, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um Bro, the middle drop of One More Day is a 9 out of 10. I think it's close to a 10 out of 10. Like, impact-wise, One More Day is just gnarly, man. Absolutely gnarly. So, yeah. I think Hollow is going to be that one track where I keep listening to it. And as I listen to it more and more, might be a uh, might be one of my favorite If Found tunes. So, I don't know if it'll be better than Getting Late. Getting Late's a banger, but yeah. All right. One more day is crazy. Seeing it live takes it even further. If you have yet to see one more day live, you are sorely missing out. One of the best tunes live. Hands down. Um, second drop live, just like gnarly, gnarly stuff. Even the first drop and the third drop and the vocals too. Depending on what show you're going to, everyone's probably singing it. Like if you go to if you go to a melodic dubstep show, everyone's probably singing it. So you can, you know, vibe with the people in the crowd, sort of thing. So, all right. 
As mentioned, so with Omar, Omar was really wanting me to listen to Terrace Dream World. Uh, Lars really wants me to listen to the Akali tunes. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to reward his consistency. He's been very consistent on the uh or not consistent, more of persistent on that I listen to the Akali tune. So we'll listen to it for him. I've heard one more day live five times now. I go hard every time. Yeah, it's it's insane. I remember when I went to uh I went to Lost in Dreams 2021. And uh that song got played about seven times at that festival. That was when it had been out for only a couple months. Um so it was fresh. People were people were playing it out. Um easily the most played song at that festival, which is generally a good sign. That's how you know you have a banger. I even saw people like there's a what was it EDM Maniac I think it was. They were saying that the same songs they like they do their their festival report cards and stuff like that. I think they they did one of Lost in Dreams and I think they mentioned that like the same songs were being played over and over again and I was like they're probably they, you just mentioned one more day by title. <laughs> Cause that song got spammed at that festival. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> but yeah. So Jason Ross playing it though it was a, it was a different level, different level of insane. So all right, Akali. He's got some new thing going on. I don't think I've really ever listened. I haven't listened to a lot of his stuff. I know he did. He's got like three singles now. I don't know if it's an album, if it's an EP. I don't know what he's doing. Um, what do you say we just find out? Three minutes and 41 seconds. I don't know what Akali's up to. I know for his album, he kind of went for more of like a melodic style sound. New Akali is a bit nostalgic to his 2020 stuff. Okay, so maybe more some melodic stuff. I think he did, I, if I'm not mistaken, didn't he do like some trap thing or something? One more day, middle drop live and shivering by Elenium. Second drop live would be insane too. Elen shivering is nuts live. I can definitely vouch for that. Shivering is nuts live. Very airy vibe so far. Nice little sort of switch up there. All right, drop one. Very sort of like, I guess, future bassy, kind of mixed with like trap, I guess. Oh yeah. Thought the idea was a little, needed a little bit more from that idea. Kind of oscillating saws in the back there. Dig that. Oof, not a big fan of those horns. Yeah, I'm not in, in love with it. It kind of feels like that sort of darker style trap blend, like blended with, with, blended with like a very tender future bass feels a little bizarre to me. Guess we'll see you how drop two feels. Very clean though. Like the mixing here, the percussion's fantastic. It's nice vocals, not like anything crazy or anything though. What's up, you like Tron? How's it going, my man? Yeah, this, this sound feels a little bland to me. Yeah, 
that feels a lot better. I kind of wish this was the starting sound and it took an elevation past that. <laughs> the hi-hats, dude. Yeah, that's not bad. I think that's another one, like the Terrace one. I can see the appeal in that. It's just not my preferred sound, necessarily. Um, but I can see the appeal in that. Kind of like a, uh, a mix of future bass and trap. Um, kind of blended together, I guess, if I was to put it in that sort of way. Kind of with the, 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 the horns that you hear in trap pretty often. And uh, mixed with those sort of future bassy style saw stacks in the back. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's got its it's it's a Cali. I know he's doing a lot of trap. He used to do a lot of melodic stuff. So, um, but yeah, just not really my just not really my sound per se. So, um, yeah, hard to say. Ooh, you don't like hard hard to say hard to say goodbye is a banger, dude. I don't know about that take, you Lightron. Hard to say goodbye is a banger. Love that song. Hard to say goodbye was better when it had a longer drop than they trimmed it for a release. I thought I think the I think the length is fine. Um I think the length of the track seems fine to me. Maybe I'd have to I haven't heard it in a hot minute, but it's very good. Six out of ten, the horns ruined it for me. Kali is a Vancouverite. Gotta support our fellow Canadians, if you know what I'm saying. Um uh, I didn't even hear anything about them trimming down the song though. Maybe, maybe I'm just out of the loop. I don't know, but <laughs> great collab. Yeah, I like, I like, hard, I like how hard to say goodbye. Um, if you heard that one at the Ascend tour, I think Annika Wells went on stage and sung it. Um, that song slapped on the Ascend tour. I don't know why they played it. It was kind of bizarre to throw in the set, but they played it. So, <laughs> all right. That'll get like a six from me, I think. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe more like a 5.75. Just not my really my preferred sound. So, um, all right. Well, we have got Jetto. Crystal Skies was hyping this one up. Yes, Annika sang it. I remember that I was I was reminiscing. On the Ascend tour yesterday, I was looking at the track list, kind of doing some reminiscing on that tour. It's still very hard to find shows that beat that Ascend tour, man. That Ascend tour was insane. So, yeah, Horns kind of took it away. I think the thing is, though, is that without them, it would have been way too basic. I think the Horns definitely added, but it was kind of just a bizarre input into the track, if that makes sense. Ascend Elenium was my first Ascend was my first Elenium slash first rave ever too. I think it was my it was it was the first time I had ever seen Elenium as well. So about as memorable of a show as it gets for your first rave, especially your first rave too. Like that's insane. How do how do you even go to another rave after that one? <laughs> like you've already seen one of the best shows that that existed. Like I've seen Elenium, I saw Elenium last summer. It wasn't as it was really good still, but it wasn't didn't have the magic that that Ascend tour did. I don't know if it ever will. That was one of the best shows I've ever seen. So, all right, we've got Jetto, Hylia. They probably played this at Mage Fest last weekend. Um, unfortunately, I had to mute all the IDs, so probably haven't heard this one. Yeah, Mage Fest was kind of tough in that aspect. They played so many IDs, and I had to mute every single one the moment it came up on the screen. I was like, shit, I can't listen to this. I gotta wait. Um, Davin smashing the guitar as a highlight. That's another one when they played, uh, I think it was throwing elbows or whatever. Yeah, that was another banger. Or Rumble. I don't remember which one it was. Um it was in some excision song they played and Davin smashes the guitar and then Reddit went insane saying, Oh, why are you smashing guitars? Dude, it's fucking, they were, they were like 
shitty guitars. And they were probably going to, I think he was saying that they were literally going to be like thrown away or something. Like they were really shitty guitars that they were smashing. And then the fans, the fans got to keep some of the pieces of the guitar. I don't know. I thought smashing the guitar was dope. I don't even think they're going to do it anymore because of all the backlash they got, which is upsetting, safe to say the least, because it was a dope part of the show. Um, it was indeed played at Mage Fest. Do you take, did you accept listening requests? Kind of a tough question. I accept, we accept listening requests, but like, not really like self promo listening requests, if it makes any sense. And it also depends on the release week too. Um, if it's a quieter release week, we'll generally take some ex some requests for songs. But um, we got a lot of music this week, so I think I only t ended up taking like two. That's generally one of those things you gotta. If you're at if you're here for the beginning of the stream, you can kind of suggest those songs. Or if we're like, you know, if I've got all day, but I gotta be somewhere in like. A hot minute here so <laughs> we are gonna get into uh i don't even know and see the thing is i don't even know if we're gonna have time for crank that it i it it was it's got to be a short stream today so um let's get into press start by hylia and jetto how did we become off stardust records by the way they've been releasing some bangers Very engaging verse production here so far. Very unique. Very unique so far. I like it too. We get some like guitar in the back. Okay. Interested where this sound is gonna go? Maybe a four on the floor sort of thing? Ooh. Oh, dude, that's so full. Tons of, you know, sort of unique aspects in there. Those saws are massive, though. Nice little lead in the back. All right. Nice little way to end the drop, too. I was like, if there was one more section, I thought the, the drop would have felt a little too long. Perfect length. Perfect length. Yeah, huge sound in those saws there. Lead was fantastic. Um, yeah, that's fucking, that's good, man. And the bass is in the back too. The construction of those just feels super unique. I can't really put a finger on exactly why. All right, let's see drop two. Oh, nice lead in there.
Yeah. And a nice, unique outro, too. Interesting. Okay. That's the first, I think that's the first solo Jetto song I've ever heard. As mentioned before, I've heard Melt. We've all heard Melt with AU5. That's a banger. That tune's an absolute banger. Um, very, very unique. I, I think there, was, there wasn't really one aspect of the track that I thought was familiar really it was like i was almost trying to like piece together what exactly was going on the whole time which is generally a good thing as long as the production's there to match with it the production was there the production was great um drop the the saws and the drops super huge man so huge and they had you know little bits of flavor to uh spice things up and make things interesting so that was a bonus um oscar loves the lead or not oscar sorry it's not oscar it's not it's not oscar it's not <laughs> it would be it's not oscar it's not oscar There's not there's not really any other way you can met, signify that it's not Oscar. Like it's not the the Oscar that shows up all the time. It's someone named not Oscar. English kind of difficult, but yeah. Um I think that's going to be very similar to the if found tune. I think I'd probably give that maybe like probably the same Maybe like an 8.5 out of 10. Just very unique. I think it's just going to take some time to get used to because it's got some elements I love, but then there's some elements where I'm just kind of confused what's going on. <laughs> it's just so unique. Like it's like it's not very, not very familiar, safe to say the least. So yeah, going to take some time. But yeah, all right. I'm gonna go do a little TKP. First of the stream. When I get back, we are going to do, which one was it? We're gonna do the Ironheart EP when I get back. So give me a sec.
but it can't make is it too late? Tired KC. Yeah. I am slightly tired. <laughs> Stayed up a little too late last night. Um, all right. We have got Ironheart, the Ophelia release of the week. Um, kind of someone that hasn't really made a ton of stuff. Oh, there it is again. Um, oh. Yeah. Ironheart has done one of my favorite tunes. Or I guess not really one of my favorite tunes, more of like one of my favorite instrumental tunes with uh, King Slayer with Caster. Um, cultured folks love that song. Yes, he used to make trance under Luke Anders, kind of switched up his vibe a little bit. He's making, a, making medieval style stuff nowadays under Ironheart. So um, super interested to see what this is going to sound like. Um, and we're probably going to start with what I believe is going to be the best one because we have got Castra Mortis, Ironheart, Celestial Void. When Celestial Void's on a track, you probably know it's going to fucking slap. So let's see what they're doing. A little loud. Ready for some cinematic soundscapes. Some storytelling. Bring in the organ. Nice. The chants, the choir. sort of like the guitar blended with the dubstep there oh dude I was hoping for a second drop Sa yeah sound design's fucked I mean it's Celestial Void you knew it was gonna be so unique like there was like one beat of like side trance <laughs> which was kind of crazy I wasn't expecting that some insane fills, glitches. Yeah. Already a playlist ad. Also super unique too. So epic, dude. All right. Oh my god. That celestial void, man. Oh, nice little fake there. Oh, yeah, bringing the melodic. 
Like, what else is there really to say? What else is there really to say? Yeah. I mean, epic sound. I just want to make sure I don't forget to add that to my playlist, by the way. Epic soundscapes. Super unique ideas. I did. I do wish that second dubstep drop had a little bit more risk but i mean fuck me the sound design was incredible on that um melodic drop at the end super epic really it really encapsulated sort of the medieval epic feel that the track was going for which i think was awesome uh and then like the first drop that was one of the first drop is probably one of the best drops i've heard this year um super unique it's like it's blending like this like guitar sort of sound with dubstep and then interjecting like weird sort of elements that keep it super interesting and unexpected um that's gonna be a fun one to get used to <laughs> that's gonna be a fun one to get used to man um yeah that fucking delivers for sure and I mean, again, it's it's Celestial Void, dude. Celestial Void has had some of the best tracks this year. Um, we've already given like three of his tracks a nine this year. This one's going to get above a nine again. It's going to get above a nine. I know. Um, but like, how can I not at this point? I don't know how he's so underrated. Like, his sound design is, is amongst the best in the scene already. I just don't, I don't understand how it's even possible. One of my buddies was messaging me earlier today. We were talking about Celestial Void. And he was like, he doesn't understand how it's possible either that, like, someone can have this absurd of sound design so early on. Like, normally, when you do some discography diving... You can see kind of their progression in sound. They're, you know, they become a little bit more talented over time. Like, dude, you go listen to Celestial Void's first song. It's fucked. It's already insane. I don't know how he did it. This dude must have been practicing for like years before he even decided to release a song. Maybe under a masked alias. I don't know. Um, regardless, it's just fucking absurd. Um, that's probably going to get a 9.25 from me. Like, listen, like the side trance there. Fuck me, dude. That's gross. Yeah. But, like, we already, we already all knew that one was gonna be good. Like, <laughs> Jesus, that should have been a single, man. That should have been a single. And then they should have dropped the, like, that should have been a single on, like, the Monday. And then they dropped the EP on the Friday. Like, I would have loved to listen. I mean, I guess I couldn't have listened to it all week. But that deserved to be a single. That track is fucking absurd. So, all right. We have got Sandjar. Can it mass, can it, can it match? Can it match the, the magic that Castro Mortis brings? Let us find out. 
by the way, oh, I didn't even read what you guys were saying. Hey, TKC, seems like I joined at the perfect time. Year of Celestial Void. Oregon. Jaws on the floor. Perfect descriptor. Nine, 10 out of 10. Song of the week. 9.59. It's the song of the week so far. Managed to beat the If Found track, which... Uh, Pretty tough test. That If Found track was really fucking good. So this is a good week so far. The strings. It's so nice to see people using instruments that don't really get the love. Especially foreign instruments and older instruments. Beautiful. Nice percussion. Beautiful snare. Oh, the build, dude. Is that like guitar in the back? Whatever that is in the back. God, I love that like call and response from the guitar sort of sound. Yeah. Kind of wish it had a little bit more dubstep sound design, but outside of that, still so fucking good. Beautiful idea. Yeah. Are we getting side trance? Dude, don't give me side trance, bro. Don't give me side trance. Ooh, nice. If we get side trans, I'm gonna lose my shit. Dude, these builds are so good, man. Some of the best builds I've ever heard. Little nice quick outro, but god damn, man. <laughs> I think my only, uh, I think if I had to make only one sort of nitpick, would have loved a little bit more, um, would have loved a little bit more, like a little bit more high end, I guess, in the uh, in the melodic drop, a little bit more dubstep sound design, but dude. Fuck me. Ideas wise, that delivers. Um, super, super engaging. I was begging for Psy because he hit that triplet. Dude, I was hoping for Psy Trance, man. If he dropped Psy Trance, I was going to lose my shit. But <laughs> outside of that, still super good. Um, yeah. And the build, the percussion in that build com combined with like the guitar in the back. Those are some of the best builds, like pre-drops, I have ever heard in my life. I was getting so into those, dude. And then 
yeah, I mean, the, 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 the medieval feel in full flow, super engaging, super unique, lots of aspects that you don't really hear in music, you know, instruments and whatnot. Um, high energy brings the energy brings the impact yeah that delivers um i think i'd give that one more of like an 8.5 still very good though still very good loving what iron heart's doing man iron heart on ophelia absolutely delivers as mentioned before king slayer is a fucking banger so all right yeah that was sanjar still a fucking banger TKC medieval or Arabic dude how about both somehow I mean there's kind of some crossover I feel like a lot of the um the instruments that you hear in medieval music kind of are reminiscent of Arabic style music with the strings and whatnot um both fucking slap dude dude toss me some riot Iowa fucking banger of a tune dude but yeah, we got some nines. We got some 8.1s. We've got another nine. Yeah, Sanjar is insane. Um, good, nice little tune there from Ironheart. Let's hit it with the final one. We've got the Mad Duke. Ironheart and Caster. Yeah, Ironheart and Caster is a go-to duo. I would love to see those two work together again. Maybe make Kingslayer part two. But let's get into the Mad Duke. Let's see what we got here. I mean, the fucking soundscapes are there, dude. I think that's gonna. T I'm not initially digging it. I think I could get used to it some time, though. favorite of the three so far. What is he saying? I can't even like make out what he's saying. Is it like some medieval shit? Like a different language? Stop. Some Kingslayer shit. Oh no, not take back what I said. Nah, take back what I said. That's fun. Oh no, I wanted that to go a little longer. Nice little keys in the outro here. Yeah, dude. All right. EP is a playlist ad. I was going to say, 
Wasn't entirely feeling the first drop as much. Definitely had its elements. Um, unique sort of idea there. Um, yeah. But then, just like, and then melodic, melodic wise, just, I just would have liked to, I just, I feel like a lot of the times when he does the melodic, I just want a little bit more high end. I know I'm so used to saws, so that's probably what I'm looking for, but just with like a little bit more from the high end there and the, when he does the melodic, but man, that fucking Psytrance, bro. That's exactly what I wanted in Sanjar. <laughs> like that sort of medieval style. Psytrance. Yeah, that was gnarly. That second drop. That second drop is insane. Um, but outside of that, what do we want to give this one? I think that's probably an 8.25. I think 8.25 is a fair rating. Um, still thought it was fantastic. Definitely, um, I think, like, the, I was probably going to give it about a 7, 7.25. Maybe even a 7.5. It probably would have been more like a 7.5. That side trance drop fucking shot the stock up for me. Um, I, as I mentioned before, too, wasn't too crazy on the vocal. Um, I also wasn't sure what he was saying. Not, that doesn't matter to me. I don't really care what they're saying. Vocals a lot of the time are just like another instrument for me. Um, but kind of interested to hear what th they were saying during the vocal. I think, I think it's gonna, that one's going to take some time to get used to with the vocal and um, whatnot. But that side trance drop, fuck me. Throw that in the set. You got me going. But yeah, overall... Um, Final thoughts on the EP. I, by the way, I don't think we're going to have time for Crank That. I think I'm going to have to do these next two singles. And then, as mentioned before, I'm running low on time. So, <laughs> I, I'm shocked. I was planning to cancel the stream today, but I was like, you know what? The music's way too good. And honestly, I don't know if Crank That would really be... Crank That doesn't really fit the vibe of the channel. So, uh, we'll cut out Crank That today, but... Yeah, we'll get we'll get two more songs and then super quick stream. I know we've only been going for two hours, but yeah, super quick stream. But overall, probably one of the better EPs I've heard this year, if not the best. I don't even know how many if there's really been that many projects that have come out this year. I'd have to go back and look and see what's come out. That's probably the best project I've heard this year, though. Project of the year so far. Um, yeah, super creative ideas, engaging, energy was present, impact was present, took a ton of risk, um, over the celestial, oh yeah, shit, I forgot that one came out already, uh, they're probably on par with each, with each other, if I had to be honest, I think the celestial void one might be a little bit better, but, um, Castrum Mortis, dude. That track is fucked. I think that one might end up being... I think I might end up listening to Castrum Mortis more than I'd end up listening to the Celestial Void tunes. But I think as a whole, I think the, the, the Celestial Void EP was definitely better. But man, Castrum Mortis is fucked. I don't even think I'm doing it justice with a 9.25. I might have to up that. Uh, You know what? I'm actually going to... Let's go with 9. Four, the rare TKC 9.4. Normally we go up at up in intervals of 0.25. You're gonna get a rare TKC 9.4 from me today. And we you got the rare TKC 7.15. We're switching up the ratings here. We're unpredictable. All right. So we've got two songs left. TK.4. Exactly, my man. We're switching things up. We have got the last two songs of the of the week we're gonna listen to today. We've got Kaiwachi Company, Pumpany, getting our pump on. I don't have a pump today, otherwise I would have uh, flexed it. Maybe I could get a pump. Before, you know what? Is that too dumb to get a pump before we listen to Pumpany? 
Okay, well, I got a TKP first. I, I'll, I'll see if we got to make that decision before we listen to it. <laughs> All right, what's the verdict? Leg pump? I was thinking of just doing as many push-ups as I could do and get a, get a push pump sort of thing. Third leg pump? I'm gonna pretend like I don't know what that means. <laughs> Should I actually just, this is, you know what, fuck it, this is stupid. We're gonna, we're gonna get a fucking pump before we start. Um, I'm gonna bring this over. We're gonna get, we're gonna do as many push ups as we can. <laughs> why? I don't know why I'm doing this. This is so stupid. We're gonna do as many as we can, though. Feel free to join along if you want to, by the way. We're gonna do as many as we can. Ready? You see me? Oh, you definitely can. Ready? Thirty. I gotta get to forty. We got to 40, baby! <laughs> Holy shit. We got to 40. <sighs> Holy fuck. <sighs> Alright, we got the we got the fucking chest pump. We got the shoulder pump. <laughs> Holy shit. <sighs> TK fit? I mean, dude, I go to the gym, I better be able to hit fucking 40 push-ups, dude. <laughs> now I'm gonna be fucking exhausted. <laughs> and I also have to put this shit back, too. This was stupid. Probably wasn't worth it. You know what? I hope you guys joined along. It's important to get your physical uh, exercise, did your daily exercise for the day. Now I'm gonna be fucking panting the whole stream. All right. How many did you guys do? Did you guys do any push ups too? Oh. All right, <laughs> that was so stupid. I don't know why I did that. My shoulders are fucking. Mm! You did 69 push ups? There's no chance. 69's fucking a lot. Unless you're just making a 69 joke. All right, we've got a chest pump, we've got a shoulder pump. Let's listen to Pumpany. I'm gonna be fucking exhausted. <laughs> All right, fuck it. Let's listen to it. We've got a pump. <sighs> I 
can't believe 40 push-ups has me in the fucking gutter. Two anabolic assholes? Yo. I love all like the gym references in Kaiwachi's music. As a fellow lifter. Fuck me. Alright, feels a little slow. Well, it feels like maybe 140. It's a little loud. Alright, this is gonna be fucking wild. What the fuck? Rhythm sort of bake out. Idea is super basic, but sound design's fucked. Yo. Give me a little bit more in drop two, come on. Elevate that idea. I said, let it go. Not really in love with that idea. Kind of, kind of took a dive in that second half. Is that it? I guess so, eh? All I needed some trend bologna sandwiches and some pumpany to become a gym god. That's really all you need. Some test, some trend bologna. Please don't take those kids if you're watching. Those are not good compounds to take. Yeah. Okay. I'm still fucking gassed from the push-ups, bro. <laughs> I'm still gassed. I mean, reacting to fucking hard-ass dubstep's probably not gonna help that either. Greg Doucette's watching right now? Dude, if fucking Greg Doucette was watching, or more plates, more dates, I'd lose my shit, bro. <laughs> Might have to give up your nad- Don't give up your natty card! It's not worth it! Don't hop on like SARMs. <sighs> yeah, I think overall, like it's company, it's Kaiwachi. It's gonna be insane. The sound design's gonna be there. It's just a question of whether the idea matches the sound design. A little too basic for me. I think the, uh, the first drop definitely brought the energy for sure. Um, but overall, just still, it felt very basic. I was kind of hoping that the second drop would elevate that sound a little bit more. Um, kind of took the sound down a notch a little bit while in terms of energy and impact while still keeping the idea relatively basic too. So just wasn't in love with that much that. Um, was it worth getting the pump for? Maybe, I don't know. The first drop was nice. Um, I mean, the pump feels fucking nice, too, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe a workout playlist ad. I don't know if that's a regular playlist ad, though. Um, maybe like a 6.75. It was, it was good. Um, Kaiwachi's sound can get a little basic at times. Yeah, that's the big problem with Kaiwachi. That's why I loved him on the dab and collab, because he brought the dubstep to kind of switch it up in the second. 
uh, in the second drop for Hollow. But I find that when you get a lot of Kaiwachi drops, tend to be a little basic at times. First drop is good for a deadlift PR. You gotta go like... Go to deadlift PR drop is like second drop of Island. Give me second drop of Island for a PR. I'm still fucking... I'm still like lightheaded from those push-ups. I don't know why I pushed so hard. I went to like fucking failure. I should have just given up at like 35. <sighs> Although when you go to the gym, you should be going to failure. Don't fucking be a bitch. Go to failure. None of this fucking three by five shit. Whatever that means. I mean, you probably just lower the weight for the next sets, but do as much as you can. If you do a three by 12, then you do a, th then, or you do first set for 12 reps, second set for 10 reps, third set for eight reps. That's what you should be doing. Go until you fail. I played hollow during an extracurricular activity at school and one person asked what the fuck the second drop was. Yeah, dubstep's not exactly the most commercially friendly sound, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm always playing, like, music at work, too, and sometimes when it's, like, some of the more heinous songs, people will look at me and they're like, what the fuck are you listening to? It's dubstep, man. All right, we got sharks, and then I got to bounce, because I'm supposed to be out of here in about 15 minutes. So, yeah. Gonna text, uh, gonna text the boys. Yeah. So, we've got sharks to end off the day. I think it's what, ethereal? Ethereal. As mentioned before, I still haven't even heard Trinite, so I don't know what I'm doing listening to this one, but let's listen to it. Sharks is always a fun listen. Even though I'm still gassed from the fucking last push-ups thing. Typical sharks in the back there. Very uh, wet sound design. That's very sure. The open soundscape, lots of reverb. That is very nice though. Nice build. On. Not my like favorite instance of his sound design, but like the twinkles kind of in there feel nice. Like the twinkles, yeah, that's really nice. Second drop. Is that called color base? This is definitely color base. Second drop's definitely a lot better in my eyes. Woo. Yeah. Just fantastic. That sound design was a lot more of my type in the second second uh, drop there. Kind of toned down the idea a little bit, but still kept that sort of liquidy texture that makes sharks fantastic. Great percussion too. Yeah. Oh, 
Those twinkles sound so nice. Just like in the empty soundscape. Yeah. All right, what are we gonna get in the third drop? A little bit more basic in the third drop. Just sort of quarter note. Oh. Brings in a little triplets. Okay, third drop was probably my least favorite, but still a very nice tune from Sharks, man. Yeah. Pretty nice. Um very nice soundscapes. Sound design, for the most part, was on point. Um, reverb. Lots of reverb. Lots of nice atmospheres. Not the biggest color base critiquer in the world, so there's, like, not much I uh, can really comment on in that. But it was, it was just nice. I don't know if it was necessarily, like, maybe... Maybe, like, a 7... I was getting into some parts of it, but color base just has to be super chaotic for me to get into it. Um, so, yeah. Definitely had more of a laid back feel. Sharks can do that for sure. So, may go to your first EDM concert, Seven Lions and Jason Ross in San Diego. That's a damn good show to start with, man. I don't know. If you haven't been to an EDM show, I always, I always try to say maybe don't make your first one an insane one but if you gotta get it, 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 it the thing is if it, it is your first one it'll be so much more special if the insane one's your first one because i think i went to like some i went to go see cash cash as my first show kind of more of it was a nice it was a really great show and like your first show hits so different but then like my second show was dab and wild youth and like fuck me dude what a tour that was he played like the whole Wild Youth album while well, that was like my favorite, favorite project. 100% recommend you go. When you mean like, what do you recommend I do there? Do you mean like, what do you recommend you do in San Diego or like at the show? Because I've never been to San Diego. I can't comment. <laughs> but in terms of, uh, what is it? Things you can do at the show. Would probably buy merch, get a jersey. That's probably a big one. Gives you something to remember. Like, I will always have this bad boy to remember my night at the Centaur. Signed by Dabin and Ray Volpe, by the way. Get a jersey. One of the most, one purchase you'll probably never regret in your life. And it gives you something to wear at the show, too. Because you don't really want to just, like... You kind of want to wear something fun. Get a jersey. Um, don't be afraid to talk to people. That's another good one. You see some people singing along. You see some guys wearing some cool jerseys. Never be afraid to say hi to people. Um, made some of my best friendships, especially with some of the guys I go raving to. Went to Chicago with a couple guys um, simply just from saying hi to them at a show. So, never be afraid to say hi. You're never going to know who you meet. Um, what are some other good tour, uh, tips, too? Earplugs. Please, please, please wear earplugs. High fidelity earplugs. Don't be like me. Even though I wore, wear earplugs, my hearing still ass. Take care of your ears. Heading off for tonight. Super tired, but thanks for an awesome stream, bro. See you next time. Thank you, FPS boy, for tuning in, my man. Appreciate you. Hope to see you in the next stream. Um, but yeah. Um, earplugs are a must. Please wear earplugs. You will not regret it. Especially if your hearing is still good. If your hearing is still good, you're hear like wearing the earplugs is barely going to make a difference. The music's still going to sound amazing. I remember when I went to go see the Ascend show 
my hearing was still was was pretty good. And wearing the earplugs, I had the earplugs fully in and the music sounded amazing. Now it's like I wear earplugs and the music's not as good. So I try to take them out a little bit and I cheat. Don't do that. Just wear your fucking earplugs. And and big thing with earplugs too, wear them right at the beginning of the show. Um, if you wear them right at the beginning of the show, you start to acclimatize to the music. Um, so that'll be a big one. Um, and then once the music starts to get louder throughout the night, you'll, you won't want to feel the need to take them out. Um, so definitely would recommend that. TKC, I'm going to be in Edmonton for a couple days in a few weeks to compete in a skills competition. That's dope, man. What skills competition is that? I don't even know what the fuck we have here, but I'm sorry you got to come to this city. <laughs> I'm sorry you got to come here, but yeah. Definitely recommend earplugs. And uh, what else? Yeah, comfortable shoes is a good one. Um, three, uh, I don't know how to say your name. Wear comfortable shoes is a big one. Wear some nice shoes. Especially, also, make sure they're shoes that you don't necessarily care that much about. Make it so that they're comfortable enough that you wouldn't want to, you know, lose them or anything. Or, like, you wouldn't care if they get ruined. But at the same time, it's also, like... By the end of the night, your shoes are going to be fucking covered in alcohol. So you're going to have that feeling where you step onto the ground and then your foot's going to stick. So <laughs> make sure they're not shoes that are like super nice. Um, but yeah, we're def Humza. Okay, sounds good, man. That is a uh, that's good to know. Skills Alberta. It's for high school students who compete in a certain skill set. Me and a friend are competing in 3D animation. That's fucking cool, man. Best of luck in that. I didn't even know we held that. But always nice to see the uh, the Alberta boys are doing their thing. So best of luck in that, my man. But I'm probably going to head out for the stream. Got to, as mentioned before, got to do my thing. So it was a super short stream, this one. Um, appreciate the TKC knowledge. Yeah, man. If you ever have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, but yeah, so I'm probably going to head out. Thank you guys for tuning into this stream. I appreciate it. Um, we'll see how the release week looks, but I've probably needed a break for a while. <laughs> We've went nonstop streaming, so I might take a break. Depends on the, how the release week looks. So NCS outro. What would be a good one? Shit, I can't think of a song, dude. I can't think of a song. I was gonna do this fucking stupid outro. I can't even think of a song to pick. It was like a cancer YouTube song. I think I got one. Wait, I don't think it's that one. Hold up. It's this one. I don't know when the drop comes, though, so I can't really time it. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next one. <laughs> I didn't time it properly, but whatever. <laughs> we had to get some Tristam and breaking. All right, take it easy, boys. I'll see you.